Hello all, in this episode we'll be looking at Mix Up 1. This episode will be different as we'll focus on the writing tool rather than writing aspects. An atypical format for this episode, firstly we'll be discussing the reasoning for this episode, followed by individual featurettes focusing on specific aspects of Mix Up Word. So why create an episode for a tool everyone is familiar with and has probably used for most of their life? Well you'd be surprised most of us learn Mix Up Word via our own personal use. So many of the features that people might know, others don't. A lot falls through the cracks. I'm looking to show you some new features which hopefully will improve your writing experience and most importantly your reports, as again this will tie back to formatting. Sectioning. Sectioning is when we are talking about the, the layout of a document. What sections, what subsections, stuff like that is going to be in our document. So. I've got a placeholder document here and I'm just going to work through this. First thing I want to do is put in a title for this document. We're going to use what is up here and is already pre-made. We're going to use the title one and that becomes our title. And just so we know, we call this the title of the document. And you press enter and we can see we went back to normal. You can check these different formatting things by using the paragraph tool here. And you can see that this text is there and it changes and it changes again. So now we've got a title of the document, we want to put it like in our introduction. Because it's hierarchical, you start from level one and then go level two, level three, and so on. Starting at heading one, if I put in introduction, there we go. And I've got introduction, and I can actually close these if it's too long. So if I want to put in a second subsection inside my introduction called aims i'd come down I'd go heading two and go aims aims there you go add that in there and then if we put in this as the aims that's our subsection now we can go further by putting in heading three for example and we'll call this like the sub aims. You wouldn't do this in a normal document, but just to prove to you. So that's how this works. You can go back down here and I'm going to add in, for example, another a heading again, heading one, and go as placeholder text. If I then come back up to the start of the document, and I want to put a insert a table of contents, you got references, table of contents. And you add one of these you can customize it and there's some customization you can do here but we're just going to use this one automatic table one and you can see here that it's put in contents introduction aims sub aims placeholder text and it's got the pages done there if i was to then get rid of placeholder text for example i don't want placeholder text anymore come down here get rid of it but you can still see it's still there what you do is you update table boom it's gone this is how you properly section a document. Text alignment. One common issue that students come across is the text alignment. Text alignment is on the home ribbon. And you can see here that you can have uh, left, center, right, and justify. Now this isn't secondary school where you're making posters or trying to be artistic what you're trying to do is best make the document readable the best way to make a document look readable is by using the justify alignment so to give you an example here is the first paragraph here it's where i then use to justify it doesn't change it much but you can see how it's added this up here if i take off the paragraph or two and we'll do a comparison there we go, and boom. So it doesn't change much, and it doesn't look like a lot here, but let's scroll down and look at this big group of text, or page or so of text here. You can see how, obviously it's a lot of red at the moment, but there's a lot of this kind of white space here. But if I, Control A, you can highlight the full document and do Control J. You can see now it's much more in line. 
and it makes it a lot more easier on the eyes to read. Now you may not think that's a lot, but over a large document it is tons of space you'll be saving and it makes it a lot more easeable and a lot more digestible than a reader can read. There's a reason why all other documents are usually formatted this way. You should be formatting yours the same way. Figures and tables. Another issue which is common among students is improper usage of figures and tables. I'm going to go and talk about figures first and then we're going to take tables later because there's not much difference between both of them. So here we have the Lockheed Martin kill chain as a figure that's talked about in this paragraph up here. But it's not great as it is right now because I don't know if this is figure one or if this is meant to be here or whatnot. So how you sort us out on Word is you either right click it and insert caption or you can come up to references and insert caption here. It'll load up this page. Then what you do is you style it as you need to. So I'm going to put figure one, Lockheed Martin kill chain. It's going to be a figure because it is a figure, but you can easily pick other things like equations or tables from here. The position for a figure is below the selected item. And then you can press OK. It adds it down here but it puts it in a different font. So what you want to do is come back up here, take it off italics, make it one less in the body of the document. So this is 11, so we want it to be 10. And then we also want it to be the same color as the rest of it, so we'll change the color. Now, it's already looking a lot better, but what things we have to do is just center this. And now it's looking a lot better than what it was originally. Tables are similar. You click on the table from this icon here. You back go back up again to references and you insert caption. It's put it to figure, so make sure you change it to table. This is going to be table one because it's the first table that's in the document. And then I'm going to write protocols and scan schedule for the census scanning tool. This time, the caption is above, as it is a table. Again, make your font colour the same. Bump up a wee tiny bit, take off italics, and put it in the centre. So we can see here that this is called figure one, and it's referencing this figure. That makes sense. But in big documents where you might be wor working through it modularly, you want to... Make sure that you're future proofing when you're writing it. So one thing you can do is let's put another picture in. We'll then caption this and we'll call it imposter image. Again, it's put it below. And you can see now that this has been updated to figure two already. But we'd have to come back up to here and change this to figure two, but that's, that's quite annoying. There's one way you can stop this. And that's by, so you highlight that, go to cross-reference, come down here to figure, and you just want to put in the label and the number, and we want to put in the Lockheed Martin kill chain, and boom, it's put in as a hyperlink. So if I was press control click, it would take me to it. There you go. But the best thing about this is I can then delete this image, this imposter image, and it's not updated yet, but if I update field, that's went to figure one, and if I update that field, it goes to figure one. Quick way to do this, if I go back, control A for the full document, right click, update field, and it does both of them at the same time. This is how you properly Caption and cross-reference images and word. Referencing. Okay, next up is referencing. Referencing is quite an important part and we can wait for Nicky if you do it uh, by hand. So thankfully Microsoft Word 
has some tools which does it for you automatically. It makes it much more easier down the line and much more easy to manage. I'll take two examples here. One we've got up here where we're talking about Wanakai and not Petya. And you can see I've referenced BBC News 2017. Now, there's nothing special about this. This is basically just written in as BBC News 2017 in some brackets. Meaning that when I come down to do my references, all the way down here, I've got to come, I've got to go references and then start going BBC News uh, 2017 and so on and so on and do it by hand. This can be rather annoying and very time consuming. So one thing you can do is come back up to here. We want to go to references and we want to insert citation add new source. So boom. You do this and it brings up this create source one. Now before we insert a citation, one thing we have to do is change the style. At Aberte, we use Harvard. So pick this one. This setting changes some formatting with references that we can, as lecturers pick up on when you're not referencing correctly. We like to stick to Harvard here because it kind of gives you the most information rather than others. And it's a generally well accepted standard. So we start by inserting a citation. Add new source. And we want to pick out what we're going to do. So what is this article? Well, this article is a news article. It's not a book. It's not a book section. It's not a journal article. That's an academic journal. It's not an article in a periodical. A periodical is like uh, New York Times, for example. Conference proceedings, it's not them. It's not a report. It's not a document from a website. It's not an electronic source. It's not an art, blah, blah, blah. So in this case, you just want to put it as a website. Now, we look for this article. There is no offer on the article. So therefore, you do corporate offer and you pick the company that you got it from. So from this, we got it from BBC, which is putting the capitals, BBC News. Not just the BBC, BBC News, as BBC covers a lot more than just the news. Name of the webpage, we put the name of the article. Thankfully, this document has the year in which it was created. So there we go. We've also got the dates, but as you can see, we're not really required to use that in this one. You've got the year access in which you can put this down. So if we come down here to the date, it's the 1st of September. So for 21, September, and the 1st, the URL, we just copy and paste the URL, and there we go. Now, you might want to put a little bit more detail in here, just in case you ever have to do this. Go to show all bibliography fields, and it will give you a lot more. Now, only the red are recommended, that's the ones that it gives you at the start, and that's all you need to put in. In this time so we press ok boom and you can see now the difference between these two this one has became a field and word and this one we can get rid of now now you might be saying to yourself right so what did i do i just did a field well let's say in this next sentence i was going to use it the same reference again well then i can hop to insert citation and click bbc news and then don't have to write it and it's there very simple if you're going to be reusing them but it's not just reuse let's go think about our references section down the bottom here we don't have to write it out because what we do is we remove this we go bibliography we go references we click this and you can see it's already put the bbc and everything we need in there and we don't have to do it at all now on to the next one the next one we've got down here as an academic reference. These are a little bit more tricky, but we do the same steps. So, we're using, in the sentence, Adrian Durimic Singh and Holderman from 2014. Now, thankfully I found this one earlier. 
and it is this one right here. Now, I can click on Usenix to get the PDF here, but then you'd have to write out all their names, and that could be quite annoying. What you can do is come to here and click Site, and you can see it already builds you one here already. Now, there's ways you can import this into Word much more easier, but I'm going to make sure that I do it correctly, so I'm going to do it manually. So I'm just going to go back to here, Insert Citation, Add a New Source. Now, this is a workshop on offensive technologies. From a little bit of knowledge, which you'll see in the research writing quickie series, I know that this is a conference proceedings. So I'm going to put it in conference proceedings. Offers, you click edit because there's multiple offers. And we'll start with the first one. So we've got D. Adrian. Once we've done that, we can then press OK. You see, it's put it all in there. Now we can add other things, such as the Zephyr Z map. This is the title. The year in which it took place was 2014. Okay, now that we've got the title and the year, we have to find out what city it was in and what publisher, as well as some other information. Something that we we're not able to get off this menu from... Google. When we click on the bib text here, it only gives us that in the Outlook. But if we go back to the actual website which the, the document lives on, which is on this website here, there's more information that we can grab. So we find out here it's in San Diego, we've got the name of the workshop and um if we actually take some bib text, they'll actually give us more that we've got here. So we can go here and we can put in San Diego And the publisher is the Use Nix Association. Now, one thing we've got is conference proceedings, but it's not in the bibliography fields here, is what is the actual conference that they're speaking at. So we need to come under here and grab the actual conference. So it's called WOOT 14. Which is the workshop on offensive technologies, which would, you know, um, and we just take away the bib text bit and you put it in. Stuff like this takes a lot of time and it's quite annoying and you have to go searching for it sometimes. But we know that we've got it, we can use it to our heart's content all over our document. So there we got it in there. It's now inputted to et al because that's what happens when there's more than two offers. So if I want to use it down here, Insert, oh, you've got references, insert citation, and it's now in here. If I ever wanted to make any, if, if I got anything wrong, I can come down to here, edit the source, and it'll come back to this one, and I can put in more information if I want, or if I spelt something wrong. This helps tremendously when it comes to reusing and updating the document rather than having to do it by hand. If we come all the way down to the bottom again, we've got references. Again, you can see that it's not been updated. If we update it again, it take put it in, and it's put it in an alphabetical order as Harvard requires the references section to be in alphabetical order. So throughout this episode, we've focused on different aspects of Microsoft Word. Hopefully, you've learned a trick or two that will help you when it comes to writing. Here are some final quick tips I just want to go over before I wrap up. Google is your friend. For the intricacies I've not covered in this video, do some personal research. If there's something that you can't do, like you would do in your coursework, just Google it. And there's a lot written out there for Word, surprisingly. Submit as a PDF. When finished, make sure to export as a PDF. When marking, PDFs are much more easy to work with than Word. And sometimes we can actually get some artifacts in Word. So therefore, it doesn't look, um, we can often see some things that you might not want us to see or that isn't what you envisioned your finished report to look like. And finally, I'm just going to talk on some uh, latex here. Don't be pressured into learning latex. Unless, you unless you're setting out to become an academic, you aren't likely to encounter it in your workplace. It can be good to help you some with some formatting. If you want to learn it, you can, but you're not forced to. You can write a banging report in Word.
Kilt, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this episode and good luck.